It may surprise you, but helicopters can routinely and safely land on the flight deck of smaller ships in rough seas while the ship is not only moving but also rolling from side to side. Even though there is very little room for error, the landing is a bit easier than you might think, thanks to the bear trap. That said, sometimes things can go wrong, and for that reason, there are two standard emergency procedures for helicopters that cannot land on the deck of a ship. But there's also a third option, a non-standard one I must say, and it's not what you think. Wind speed, ship motion, and sea states all affect helicopter landings at sea. Moreover, the air wake from a ship's superstructure can also impact helicopter performance. These and other factors are combined into Ship Helicopter Operating Limits or SHOAL or S-HOAL. SHOAL is a polar plot of acceptable conditions in which performing flight operations is considered safe. Stay within these operating limits and a helicopter should be able to land safely. But back in the day, Landing a helicopter in rough seas was considered to be outside of the operating limits and therefore was not a practice. In the mid-1950s, navies were looking to introduce ship-based helicopters for specific missions. But not being able to land those helicopters in high seas put a dent into those plans. That is, until the late 1950s and early 1960s, when the Royal Canadian Navy started experimenting with a device that became known as a bear trap. A bear trap is a rectangular device that allows helicopters to depart and land from smaller ships, such as frigates and destroyers, in a wide range of conditions. The invention of bear trap permitted the operation of helicopters on smaller vessels in rough seas, up to Sea State 6, allowing them to handle 30 degrees of roll and 9 degrees of pitch during day and night. Following the success of Canadians with the Bear Trap, other navies, including the Royal Navy and the U.S. Navy, adopted similar technologies. A Canadian Bear Trap works as follows. A probe is attached to a cable which is lowered from the helicopter to the flight deck. The flight deck crew, then using their bare hands, attach the cable through the center of the Bear Trap to a winch below the flight deck. The cable is kept under constant tension, which is controlled by an automatic hydraulic system. This synchronizes the ship with the helicopter. When the pilot and the landing signal officer are comfortable that the motion of the helicopter and the ship is relatively stable, the pilot decreases the power and the LSO increases the cable's tension. As the pilot flies the helicopter down, the winch pulls the helicopter's main probe into the center of the bear trap, which is then closed. Bear Trap not only can catch and secure the helicopter in place, but it can also move the aircraft in and out of the hangar using a rail system. The original Bear Trap system, even though very helpful, had a disadvantage. Since it required the flight deck crew to be on the deck to handle the cable, in stormy conditions there was a risk of man overboard. That's why more advanced versions of the Bear Trap were developed like Curtis Wright's advanced handling technology known as ASSIST. ASSIST uses an optical positioning system that continuously tracks and monitors the exact position of the helicopter relative to the designated landing area. As the helicopter touches down, it is immediately secured using the bear trap and then aligned and traversed into the hangar without requiring any personnel on deck. Some navies refer to Bear Trap as Recovery Assist Secure and Traverse, or RAST, or McTaggart Trigon System. While multiple versions of Recovery Assist exist, most rely on a grappling device or a probe that's secured when the helicopter lands and the Bear Trap is closed. An alternative to the Bear Trap is a deck lock system, which uses a steel grid in the middle of the flight deck. The pilot hovers over the grid, waiting for the right moment to descend. Once landed, a locking harpoon is deployed, which engages the hydraulic actuator system that pulls the helicopter onto the deck. The benefit of the system is that it doesn't require any personnel to approach the helicopter, especially during rough seas. A version of the deck lock system that utilizes a harpoon mechanism was developed in the UK back in the 1970s and was tested on this moving platform. A nice feature of this system is that it can rotate the helicopter 360 degrees 
which simplifies handling. For smaller surface combatants that rely on helicopters, Bear Trap and other similar systems have strategic importance. In 2014, the Japanese government expressed concerns about a French company that sold their system to China. A few years later, in 2017, Japan developed the first system that could automatically land a helicopter on a moving ship. This system relies on GPS navigation to get close to the ship. Then, the laser sensors are activated on both vessels, which calculate the relative position of the helicopter to the moving ship with an error range of just a few inches. This allows the helicopter to land safely and automatically. All this said, there are scenarios under which helicopters cannot land on the flight deck, whether it's a helicopter malfunction or an issue on the flight deck. Sadly, there have been attempted landings that have resulted in fatalities. While emergencies cannot always be prevented, emergency drills can increase the odds of survival. The first alternative to landing on the ship is to land somewhere else. Of course, this may not always be possible, but since helicopters can be refueled from the ship while still airborne, the refueling can increase the helicopter's range to its maximum which in some cases can provide an alternative landing area somewhere else. Helicopter in-flight refueling, or HIFER, begins when the helicopter lowers a bag attached to a cable onto the flight deck. The refueling crew then attach the fuel hose to the cable, which in turn is hoisted back onto the heli and hooked up to the fuel tank. Once fueling is done, the hose is lowered and the helicopter flies away. In case you're wondering why there was a bag attached to the cable, the bag is used to pull up a fuel sample that is visually inspected by the flight crew for fuel contaminants. The weight of the bag also prevents the hoist cable from swinging around as it's being lowered onto the flight deck. When landing on a ship is not possible, the second option is to land on water. This is what happened during a replenishment mission where a CH-46 Sea Knight experienced an engine failure over the deck of USNS Spica. The pilot immediately reacted by releasing the load and clearing the deck. Next, by relying on auto-rotation, the pilot was able to successfully land the helicopter on water. The Sea Knight capsized to the right as the crew escaped the fast-sinking vehicle. Everyone made it out alive thanks to the emergency egress training that the crew would have previously received. This was also one of the first times that heat bottles were used by the helicopter crew in a real-life emergency. Finally, the third emergency option, and this is quite a rare one. But what do you do when multiple helicopters have to land on a ship and there's only room for one? This situation, in fact, came up when the United States was evacuating its troops from Vietnam. As the evacuation fleet was sailing away, several South Vietnamese helicopters approached the ship and were packed with refugees who were trying to escape. In a humanitarian effort, the helicopters were allowed to land, one at a time. That's right, after each landing, the crew skidded the helicopter off the ship to make room for the next chopper to land. In some cases, the pilot dropped off their passengers, then crash-landed in water near the ship to be rescued. But if you think this was impressive, which it was, I should remind you that during these evacuations, a Cessna 01 dropped a note on the deck of the American aircraft carrier USS Midway. The note read, Can you move these helicopters to the other side? I can land on your runway. I can fly one hour more. We have enough time to move. Please rescue me. Major Buong, wife and five child. That was a Vietnamese pilot and his family. Midway's commanding officer ordered the clearing of the landing area where an estimated $10 million worth of UH-1 Huey helicopters were pushed overboard. Major Buong safely touched down becoming the first South Vietnamese Air Force fixed-wing pilot to ever land on a carrier. Another Cessna 01 was also recovered by USS Midway later that afternoon. If you'd like to talk to us live, consider joining our Discord server, where we do Q&As. 
Share your suggestions and video ideas with us and meet other fans. You don't want to miss the game nights because they're coming soon. See the top comment for more info.